Hi, I'm Marty. Hi, I'm Star. We're, We're here, here with, with your, your daily bliss. bliss. Today, we want to talk to you about the yamas. Yes, we want to tell you about the things that you definitely should not be doing, okay? This is so that you can live a life that's more pure, that's going to be more in sync and more healthy. That's really what yoga is about. And the yamas are the first limb of your yoga practice. And there are five of these yamas or these restraints. They're these codes of conduct. And the very first one is ahimsa, which is nonviolence. Yes. So nonviolent, not just for um, not, of course, you can't go out and kill anybody. Or beat them up. Beat them up. <laughs> so you're not going to be violent. You're not going to be violent with animals. Um, you're not going to be violent with the environment. And you're also not going to be violent with yourself. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot when you're doing your physical practice. Certain things will come up and you start being very violent in your own mind to yourself. Criticism, self-criticism, the things that we say to ourselves, sometimes we wouldn't even say to other people. And so ahimsa is the very first yama because it's the foundation of your yoga practice. You have to ground yourself in nonviolence for the rest of your practice to be able to blossom. The second yama is satya, which is truthfulness. And so that, it means no lying. You don't lie to other people. You don't cheat in your relationships. And you know why we lie? Because sometimes the truth is scary. And you come back to that realization that nonviolence comes first. So if maybe you're in a situation where you feel like, I need to tell the truth, yes, you do, right? But that doesn't mean that you need to be brutally honest because um, brutality is harmful. So be kind. Be really kind. Be kind with your words. So you're truthful, but with kindness. And also being kind to yourself when you talk to yourself because you are always listening you to are. what you're saying. You're listening. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get into the third yama. Which all of a sudden, I can't remember what that is. Astella, which Astella. sounds like Estrella. It sounds like Estrella, <laughs> which is star. That's my name. <laughs> and so Astella is not stealing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, not taking material things. But it's even more than that. It, you know, especially right now with our technology, mm -hmm. okay? No hacking. Mm -hmm. No hacking people's emails. No taking uh, people's identity. Uh, just really making sure that you, again, are, are pure in your actions. Yes, asteya, asteya, non-stealing. That's the third one. And then the fourth yama is brahmacharya, which has multiple translations. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And the original translation was celibacy or abstinence. And that made sense in the time when all of this was coming up. Because back then, the, the yogis were not just the people that were actually practicing yoga. These were sages that were spiritual people. And for them, um, being involved in sexuality was actually a distraction. So these people were not, they weren't married. And so there was no purpose for them to be practicing sex. While we are householders, okay? So we... Um, if you're married, you know, of course, you're, you're involved in, in sexual activity. And even if you're not married, it's not really about sex necessarily. It's really about having uh, control over your senses and over your reactions and over your energy. Yes. And, and not having excess. And so uh, a more modern translation of brahmacharya is non excess. You know, you don't have to go to the extremes. And, and this can even correlate with your food, you know, not eating, not stuffing yourself to where you can't take it anymore yes. just because it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fifth limb is a parigraha, which translates as non-possessiveness um, or not being greedy. Not being greedy. Yes, not being greedy. Um, and also, you know, it's that, that sense of lack that um, sometimes people have. When you think that there isn't enough, you're going to run out. You better gather it all. Hoarding. You see people that, you know, 
have their garages just stuffed with stuff. Their cars don't fit in there, but they have a lot of cans in case, you know, they need them. <laughs> and so, you know, it's it's really important to to not have that that greediness and that sense of lack. And the way to get around that is about it's like practicing generosity. So you need to give. You need to give with your prayers, you need to give with your chants, and you need to also give money to those people that spiritually feed you. Because that feeds you. When we, when we serve, it makes you feel good. And, and it correlates with this of us all being connected. As you help somebody else, you are ultimately still helping yourself. And, and energetically, you feel that, even though when we're looking at each other, we see this, these individuals. The separation. The separation is an illusion. So it's an illusion to think that we're separate, and we're trying to wake up from that illusion. So practice that balance. Don't be greedy. And be generous. <laughs> well, that's it for your daily bliss. Thank you for being you. Namaste. Namaste.